Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. While I've been digging through my somewhat reduced collection of children's books from my childhood, I found that I had three all by the same illustrator. Two are directly related to each other, but one is a complete standalone. So I thought those would be interesting to put all in a row, but I'm going to start with the standalone one. So today we are looking at The Little Lost Unicorn by Michael J. Pelosky, illustrated by Tammy Starner Eltop. Yes, a lot of my books have unicorns, in case you haven't noticed. Yeah, and someone did their research. That's a very lanky young unicorn. Horses are usually a bit lanky when they are young. There's a lot of leg to that unicorn. Yes. Do that full or filly with the wreath of flowers around the neck. We could assume female, but we're only on the cover. So we don't know anything, except that this is probably the little lost unicorn. Let's get into it, shall we? <laughs> hmm, let's. Little Alana and the other baby unicorns loved to frolic through Morning Glory Meadow. It was the home of the magical forest unicorns, as opposed to other types of unicorns, I guess. One warm sunny day, the older unicorns were in the meadow teaching the babies some games. Looks like it. Nice illustration, good perspective, scale. Flowers are a little... Yeah, they stand out compared to the rest of the artwork, which is more realistic compared to the flowers, which are very cartoonist. Very cartoon... Kind of cartoonistic? Yeah, English not working for me right now. Come to me now, called Arabella, one of the most beautiful unicorns. Okay. Why is that an important feature? Also, she doesn't look that different from the children. She just looks older. Also scaled up slightly. The head's also quite a bit larger. Quickly, Alana and the other babies gathered around Arabella. Listen carefully. Arabella said, you must all learn this rhyme. It is the special poem of unicorns. Alana listened carefully as Arabella repeated the poem. The moon is by night, the sun is by day. Whichever you follow will show you the way. Alana and the other baby unicorns said the rhyme over and over. Alana was one of the first to learn it. Of course. And this is where the title comes in. This unicorn is going to get lost, and she's going to use the moon, or the sun, or both, to get back to the herd. Even though the moon and sun, I don't think, follow the same curve in the sky, and they wouldn't be in the same places either. Because the location in the sky depends on the time of day, or night. Also where you are, what hemisphere, all that fun stuff. But hey, this is a children's book, right? Soon, all the babies knew the unicorn poem. They scampered away to play again. As they pranced through a patch of flowers, Alana saw a pretty butterfly. Okay, first a beautiful unicorn, now a pretty butterfly. Let's play follow the leader, she called, and she chased after the butterfly. Ah, I see the butterfly, but I also see, um, what did you call those in the other book? Um, I called it dappling. Dappling. Hmm, I wonder if that's how cutie marks evolved. And I'm not talking about actual lore, I'm talking about the actual creator. I don't know, the original MLP toy line was supposed to be more realistic ponies, and the earliest ones were, both the realistic shaping of you know, the more rounded bodies and more realistic colors. The toy line transitioned over into the more brightly colored pastels to, in order to sell better. I'm not sure where the toy line fell in and all of that, hmm. but back to the book. The beautiful butterfly led Alana on a merry chase. Soon Alana's unicorn friends were left far behind. Stop! Don't fly away! cried Alana as the butterfly fluttered up toward the clouds. I still want to play! I see forest in that picture, aka a couple of trees off to the side. Yes, but there are still one, two, three, four, five unicorns in the shot, not counting Alana. Just then, a tiny rabbit hopped out of a bush. Alana smiled as the little bunny wiggled its pink nose at her. Do you want to play? Alana asked. The bunny turned up its fluffy white tail and bounded into the forest. Alana giggled and trotted after the little rabbit. Uh-oh. I've got 
got a bad feeling about this. It's a children's book. How bad could it get later? Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was a children's book. The playful bunny zigzagged this way and that. With every hop, little Alana followed. Each step took her deeper into the woods. After a while, the bunny disappeared. Where are you, bunny? called Alana, looking all around. Yeah, I can see how she'd miss that. Right behind a log. Going into some bushes. Mm. Alana was all alone. Nothing looked like home, and it was getting dark. Well, yes, because... The unicorns frolic through Morning Glory Meadow, which is the home of the Magical Forest Unicorns. So the Magical Forest Unicorns live in a meadow. Uh, and now she's in the forest. I see your point. I see your point. I'm lost, she cried. Suddenly, a spooky shadow crossed Alana's path. Alana was very frightened. She ran and ran. She didn't stop until she came to the edge of a cool blue lake. Who is that? That is a spooky shadow. Hmm. I see she's losing her flower neck. Flower neck. A flower necklace or wreath of flowers. Thank you. Because she's no longer around other unicorns, so we don't need the Pokemon trick of, let's make this Pokemon look different than all the other Pokemon. <laughs> uh, like how everyone in the TV series would make unique identifiers on their Pokeballs. Mm-hmm. Like, there was this great episode with Ash and a counterpart, Ash. Mm-hmm. Where Ash was like, oh, man, I can't tell my Pokeball apart. And he's like, well, I've got R's on all mine. Mm-hmm. Also, how, like, when Ash's Butterfree was going out to court, the other Butterfree, we had to give him a scarf. The, the Shroomish, I think, uh, later Jin, we had to give it a little white necktie. Oh, yes, this Pokemon's important. It got hurt. There's a Band-Aid. Now we can tell it apart. Shh. Alana peered into the shimmering water. A face stared up at her. Startled, Alana jumped back. Who's that? She wondered. She peeked again. It was her own face. Apparently, Alana has never drank from a still pool before. Yeah. The was... meadow must have running water only. Apparently. Alana smiled. The bright full moon gave her face a special glow. The moon, Alana shouted, suddenly remembering something. Uh, oh. The moon is by night, the sun is by day. Whichever you follow will show you the way. I remember now, Alana said. To get home, I have to follow the moon. At no time did Arabella ever say that the poem was a guide. She just said, this is a special poem of unicorns and you have to learn it. Yeah, also it, like, probably wouldn't work. Yes, but this is the land where you can have Morning Glory Meadow, home of the magical forest unicorns. Mm-hmm. The rules could be different. At least that wasn't Morning Glory Meadow, the home of the city unicorns. That would get really confusing. Mm-hmm. Alana was still frightened, but she kept following the moon. Soon some friendly fireflies found Alana. They lighted her way through the dark woods. Of course. At long last, Alana reached the edge of Morning Glory Meadow. Thank you, she called to the fireflies as she scampered out of the forest. Now how are we going to tell her apart? I know, the fireflies are gone, her flowers are gone. Alana saw the other unicorns waiting, waiting. A young unicorn was missing, and they're waiting? They didn't go looking for her? I wonder. I was lost, said Alana, but the moon showed me the way, and it's good to be home with all my friends. Yeah. The lesson is, use this poem to get your way back home. That's not gonna work for all the kids around the world, or even around the U.S., where this was most likely mostly published. Yes, published by Will-O-Wisp Press in Ohio. And printed in the U.S. Hmm. So, your thoughts? It was slightly painful. <laughs> <laughs> slightly painful, she says. 
So, describe the reason why it's so painful. So, we don't have any warning of don't run off. We have, we're playing games in the meadow, you must learn this poem. Then Alana gets distracted by something shiny. No one notices that she's gone. No one seems to care that she's gone. Until the last page. Also, I must remember to face the mic, because I'm talking towards Amber's direction, and I just realized that's probably why I'm so quiet on a lot of these recordings. I apologize. I mean, I tell her to face the mic all the time. And I'm the one who's holding the book. All he has to do is sit there. Yeah. So, any more? Also, it's an owl. The shadow in the sky was an owl. In case uh, Lux's attempts at sound effects didn't make that obvious. I was going for a pun on the word who. Also, a lot of sameness on the unicorns. They all have the same gray color scheme, gold horns, dark gray hooves. Yeah, they're very, they're very monochrome in kind of all senses of that word. They're monochrome, meaning they're a single shade of color. They're also monochrome being almost completely gray. Because when people think monochrome, they think shades of black or gray. But monochrome actually just means anything that's a set of one color. I'm an artist. I say that as a joke. It's one of the things we get taught. But the interesting thing is, if you look at these other books that will be in the next two episodes, we seem to also have more of that grayness. Mmm. Or should we say sameness? I'm guessing I should stop talking so we can wrap this up. Well, just trying to tie the three together a little bit, because I did choose to do these three because they all had the same artist. The next two will have the same author, but all three have the same artist. So this has been The Little Lost Unicorn by Michael J. Polosky, illustrated by Tammy Starner Allop. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, leaving a friendly comment, and checking out other videos in the Ember's Reading Room or Lux Analysis lineup. If you're interested in finding a copy of this book, please look for an Amazon link below. If it's still in print, we'll try to provide you with one. And if you happen to like shopping, period, we have also provided a referral link to the shopping rebate site, Ebates. Get cash back on your purchases that you already make. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with the content of the Lux Analysis channel.